She was amazing last year. She had a, just the most glorious. The whole winter went her way because it was such a dry one. She started nice and early. She was ready for that Kempton listed race. She went from there to the elite hurdle. She then went to the uh, Christmas hurdle uh, where she beat Bouba Dare. You know, fair play to her. It was quick ground and Nico rode her to her, to her strength. He said to me, the morning of the race, I'm going to have one crack at him halfway up the running. I said, okay, fine. If you <laughs> I'll see it when I believe it. And sure as eggs, he did. I, th I think the ground had a lot to do with it. But fair play to her. Brilliant. We went flat racing with her. She won that. She won a listed race. Where there was talk of Melbourne Cups. There was talk of all sorts of things. Um, she ran in the champion hurdle. The ground was blatantly too soft for her. Davy Russell looked after her. And she came back and won the Scottish champion hurdle. And then had another flat race on top of that. But, and she was group placed, I think. And so I think what's, she was what's, what's the plan for her going forward? Are you going to again try and mix well, we've it? Just, with we've had a bad start, to be honest. There's a couple of things with the feet and differences. And she's, she missed, well, she's Mrs. Kempton. She'll be back. I mean, it'll have to be the same thing. Um, but, but she does have to have fast ground. I mean, take on Bouva Dairy in soft ground and it, it, the result will be very, very different. Let's talk a bit about your top juveniles and um, kicking off with Pentland Hills. Um, unbeaten three from three, he's 10 to one with Unibet to win the Unibet champion hurdle. In your idea it, or in your mind, is that a realistic price? Do you think it's a, gen a well, genuine... Well, the, ju the juvenile situation was bizarre last year because the first thing that happened is that Fusy Raffles came out in the Adonis at Kempton and I've got to say he slightly surprised me um, and I said to Sophie walking off the stands, I said, well that's, I said, at least we found a Triumph Hurdle horse and we got down to the unsaddling enclosure and he had literally skinned his hind leg and so the, the Triumph Hurdle dream had lasted about three minutes and there was no question of him getting back. It was horrible. It really was horrific. Um, and so that was that. Then we had some other, well, we had Pentland Hills, who hadn't run, not, by any, not for any good reason, but he'd been busy on the flat, so we gave him a break. He went to Henrietta Knights to lose school and learn to jump. And she said from day one, this horse is brilliant. And so we launched him at Plumpton, only a just a fortnight before the Triumph Hurdle. Race that actually we'd used to launch horse called First Bout, who won the Triumph Hurdle way back sort of in the Noah's Ark days, you know? And um, the one thing about him that day, yes, he won, and he won very easily, but he was so professional. He was like a horse that had been doing it all his life. Um, he was just, very, he was enthusiastic, he was dead straight. You know, a lot of those juveniles, when they run first time over hurdles, is, ah, what's happening? And, and he was just like he'd been doing it all his life. And I said, and he belongs to the owner's group, a sort of offshoot of elite, and there's 3,000 members of it. And I said to them, look, it, it, it might sound, it, it's not normal Henderson style, but there's nothing I could really do to put you off if you wanted to run him in the Triumph, because he was just so professional. I think he'll cope with it. And, um, you know, you've got 3,000 people that would, you know, they might never get a chance again to have a runner in that sort of race. So we did. And in fact, actually, nearly, there was nearly a big disaster at the first. But from there on, he was brilliant, and he was very, very professional again. Um, and he surprised me, to be honest with you, but well, not, no, because I wouldn't have run him if I didn't think he was realistic. Um, and then he went on to Aintree and Frank, the whole performance. It was no fluke. It was absolutely rock solid. He was very good at Aintree. Um, and then we had just about mended Fuzzy Raffles. We got him back by the skin of our teeth in time to go to Punchestown, where he won the grade one juvenile over there. So, having thought we'd got no juveniles last year, we finished up with, a, with the top two, which is a nice position to be in. I think the only thing where you have to be careful, and we've seen it all before, 
how many five-year-olds have won a champion hurdle. Um, see you then did, so we've managed it once, but it's a diff they have a very difficult se second season. But neither of them have had, a d had very hard seasons. They only had, uh, Fuzzy Raffles only had two runs, and Pentland Hills only had three. So they, sh they certainly weren't, they didn't have a hard time. Um, now we just got to see if, you know, they were the best two four-year-olds in the country. Um, now they've got to join in with the other boys. It'll be tough. Um, Have you got a race in mind as a, as a possible starting point for I Just in our mind, yes. I mean, whether, I, I don't know that uh, Ajdali will probably run in the four-year-old at Cheltenham next week. Percy Raffles wants a bit more time. Uh, he's not quite ready. Uh, Pentland, he'll work tomorrow. Um, you know, there's the elite hurdle. There's, there's all sorts of places we can go. But you know you're going to bump into the, the to the uh, to the older brigade. Um, they've got their grade one penalties, so it's not going to be very easy. We last saw Rath Hill running the Unibet Tolworth hurdle when he was a slightly disappointing favourite, but a, a reason obviously came to light from that because we didn't see him after. Um, how's he been since we saw him at Sandown? He's been great so far this year. We've actually. We toyed with the, well, we were toying with Novice Chasing with him. We probably just sort of decided that we might, just talking to JP and AP, really, when we've, we were schooling this morning, and actually I schooled him back over hurdles for two reasons, really. One is that a lot of those horses you've mentioned in Champs and Champagne Platinum, Dicky Diver, uh, Birchdale, they are JPs, so he's going to have a, fairly strong hand of novice chasers here and I expect he's got plenty more elsewhere as well so um, we're, we're, we're leaning towards Rathill's only had two runs over hurdles he is a chaser in the making but we might well just stay back over hurdles for another season and see how he gets on he'd be the, uh, of that sort of bunch he'd be the horse to do it with he's only had two runs and a bit more experience wouldn't do any harm a very, very strong group of mares you've got to go to all with this season, Nicky. Um, starting off with, with Lust for Glory, who you've retained here at um, Seven Barrows. I do. She's a mare I like a lot. I, I do think she wants good ground. Um, she won her first couple of races, was very impressive, then got beaten in soft ground. And I, I think she, you know, she does want, if given her ground, and I think almost certainly over fences. So I, I hope she's a good mare. Dame de Compagnie, we haven't seen quite as much of her as No, again, I think she's very talented um, and I haven't quite decided which way she goes yet. Again, JP's got a pretty strong hand of mares, um, you know, in that Apple Shakira, um, Epitant, um, and quite a few more. That, never uh, adapt. Never adapt. <laughs> yeah, she Countista. was wild. Countista, I like a lot. Never adapt was wild at Cheltenham. I mean, how are we going to settle her down? I do not know. She got a problem as a result of that race and didn't appear again. Robert Welly Cohen's got another nice filly, Elusive Bell. She looked very good um, in a couple of her starts. She got a bit free one day at Sandown, but otherwise, I think she's pretty talented as well. So, of all of the mares, um, is it Lust for Glory the, the the one that we should focus on? Well, that's Roberts now as well, and Elusive Bell, and I do like. You know, there's some, some, some another nice bunch of you mentioned my whirlwind and and uh, there's, there's a lot of nice new new mares in there as well. Um, so again, I think there's a strong bunch, especially to go novice chasing. I, I I applaud the new you know encouraging mares into national hunt or encouraging keeping uh, national hunt mares to go chasing. Um, I would very much like Horse of the Queen, Sunshade. She was very impressive at Cheltenham at the back end of the season, having had stupid problems all the way through. We got a run into her. She won a listed hurdle very impressively. She jumps fences very well too, so she'll be going novice chasing. Could be pretty smart. Will Apple Shakira go over fences? We scored her over hurdles this morning. I mean, again, she just, she was very impressive the first few times, and then she suddenly got very buzzy about the whole whole game and and she was nice and settled today i think i'd start over hurdles anyway and then just see how she you know if she settled down then you could probably try her over a fence let's kick off with, with chantry house who was an impressive winner at some warwick on debut 
Yeah, he's a lovely horse. Um, he was very good, that's all he did. Um, there wasn't any need to do any more. He's schooled, he's very good at that. Again, there's, a, there's, there's quite a few of them that have come from the same sort of sources that are going to come into their novice hurdles over what distances, I'm not sure. None of these horses were very slow. They're, um, they're quite pacey and classy individuals. Coronie? Coronie I like a lot, and he's a horse I think has grown and developed and, and improved quite considerably on last year. He's in good shape. I mean, you know, he, he showed us promise last year without sort of being the obvious one. Um, but I must admit, I think he's done really well through the summer. Newbury uh, bumpers are always worth um, paying close attention to. And you had a really uh, eye-catching runner called Fugitive's Drift, uh, one of Henry Ponsonby's finished third. Um, how smart could he be, do you think? I don't know, because he was really hardly ready for the... That was the sales bumper, the golf sales bumper at Newbury. And he was hardly prepared for it. And I mean, it was just a really nice eye-catching sort of run and put him away. Um, like all the others, they're all schooled. Um, he was in a bit later than the others, um, so he's not quite as forward. But no, he's a, he's a very likeable horse. Another horse that was very, very likeable, extremely eye-catching when he won his um, bumper at Kempton on the Saturday after Charlton was Shiskin. And what was a good weekend, of course, for Joe Donnelly. That's but right. How good is Shiskin going to be, do you think? Well, I'd, I'd say he's a, he's a lovely man, Joe Donnelly. He owned Album Photo, uh, who'd won the Gold Cup on the Friday, worth 700 or whatever million, no, lots and lots and lots of noughts. And having done that, he very... You know, it was, very, it was great. He came to Kempton on the Saturday to watch Shishkin running for 1,200 quid. And um, I think it gave him as much pleasure as it did me, and Friday even. No, he was very impressive. I'd have been a bit disappointed if he hadn't have been, to be honest with you. I think he's a very nice horse. And actually, Joe has another horse, it sure is, um, who actually didn't run. He's just had a point to point in Ireland. and. He didn't run a bumper here, but he looks, if, if he's, you know, they're the same sort of horses. And finally, with those bumper horses, um, Son of Canis, um, sent off favourite for the, <laughs> the Land Jumper bumper at, at Punches Down. Um, what were your thoughts after the race? Was it a bit disappointing? Well, I can only say that it, I wouldn't have taken him to Punches Down if I didn't think he was any good. He started favourite for it, which I don't suppose he would have done unless we thought he was some good. And he ran absolutely appallingly, dreadful, embarrassing. Um, and yet, funny enough, he, he worked this morning and he worked exactly as he did last year. He looked a good horse. Uh, he jumps well. Um, so I hope, he, you say, you mentioned the bumper winners. He actually ran in one bumper and finished last. So, um, and yet we're talking about him, but uh, I, I think he is. I mean, there was quite a few others that were, was sort of potentially, you know, that we just ran out of time in the spring. The, the, the ground got dried up very quickly last spring. And we finished up with quite a lot of horses that we just didn't quite get them onto the race course. So, um, you know, they're unknowns, but I think they look quite nice. Speaking of unknowns, let's just whiz through these sources very quickly. Felony. Well, he was one of the obvious ones, yeah. I think he's a nice horse by Getaway. Uh, he showed us plenty, yeah. Giant's Table? He's a nice horse. I mean, he'd, he'd won a point to point in Ireland. Um, he's a good looking horse by Great Pretender. Um, yeah, look forward to him enormously. My Whirlwind? She's a lovely mare. Um, she's beautiful. Um, I don't, we haven't done a lot with her. She's schooled. She'd won a point to point. I don't think I'd bother with a bumper. Um, She's a very, very good-looking mare. I, I hope she's as good as she looks. Real well, wild-bred horse, Nicky Artorias, a half-brother to the multiple Unibet champion hurdler, Hurricane Fly. By Camelot. Um, which isn't your most sort of obvious national hunt, sir. He's just a very, very good sir himself. Um, he, he didn't get a run last year. He, again, he was one of those that was virtually all ready to run and dressed all dressed up and ready to go. But the great, he's a big horse, big big horse. He probably didn't need a run. He was growing all the time. He's grown into a mighty... I mean, he was always a beautiful horse. He really was. 
you know, with his pedigree and looks, he, he's a, you know, he has everything, but he's still got to do it. And of those horses we've just spoken about who are yet to, to make their debuts in, in the UK, which is the most forward? Which one do we like to see first of all, do you think? Uh, it sure is. He's quite forward. Um, as my whirlwind, she did her first little bit of work this morning. Shishkin, he, he's, they're, they're all about, they're all in the same place. It is actually all going to happen in a rush in a fortnight's time because they're just going to need a couple of bits of work on the grass. Now we're on it and we can get schooled on the grass and then away we go, I hope.